don't know about you, but there is no greater feeling in the world than this. Double chests stacked in columns, signs with words all over them, armor stands with armor missing. I feel like I'm not selling this correctly. We are now at a point in the world where everything is organized and we can get to bigger and better things. For the last couple of episodes, I've either been stuck inside this house, wandering aimlessly through the caves, or bumping my head on a short ceiling in the branch mine. I'm kind of ready to see the sun. So today on the Bedrock Guide, I am breaking out of the four walls into the great outdoors to take myself on a nice vacation of a good old fashioned fishing trip. The first thing I need to do on my trip to the outdoors um, is actually to head back inside. I need some supplies before I can go fishing. To start out our fishing trip, I'm gonna take with me not one, not two, not three, but four buckets and my diamond sword. You all thought I was gonna start out with a fishing rod, didn't you? Well, this ain't that kind of fishing trip yet, my friend. Hey, don't forget to shut your front door on the way out. To start my fishing trip, I need to find a water source, and thankfully, there's plenty of it around here. One important thing to keep Keep in mind, though, is that not all water sources are the same. There are four different categories of fish in Minecraft, and not all four categories spawn in every type of water source. This is a river biome, and in river biomes, you will find squid, and you will find salmon swimming around. You'll also find these guys, obviously, uh, that's not a fish, and you kind of want to steer clear of them until you got a little bit more protection. Some of these guys, the drowned, have tridents, and they hurt. Ow. Basically, a drowned is a zombie that spent a little bit too much time in the water. But don't worry, if he comes out onto land, he's going to start burning, so we're pretty safe up here. Way back on episode two, I talked about the best food sources in the game, and that's kind of why we're doing fishing today, because it is another source of food, among other things, that we'll get to later. But one of the most frequent comments that I saw on that video was, why didn't you include fish in that episode? Honestly, most of it had to do with the time it takes to catch fish and the energy expended. And for a comparison in the early game like that, it's not worth your time. As you're swimming around, not only are you expending hunger, you also have to balance this whole air thing. You see the air bubbles on the hot bar? Yeah, the last one just popped. We gotta come up for air. If we don't come up for air, we're gonna start drowning and taking damage very quickly. And I just don't think that's what we want to happen. When you finally do find some salmon, you can go ahead and take your sword and just take a swipe at it real quick. Uh, if you can actually catch it. There we go. When you hunt fish in Minecraft with a sword, you will get a raw drop of whatever type of fish that you just hunted. So for example, I just got raw salmon. When you hunt fish, they also have a chance to drop a bone. This is actually different than Java Edition. In Java Edition, there's a chance to drop bone meal, which is basically the same thing. We just have to take the bones and craft them into bone meal instead. If for some reason you don't want to hunt the fish straight away, maybe you want to keep it as a pet. You can take a water bucket and scoop up the fish and take it home with you. Now I've got a bucket of salmon. And now this is your opportunity to get involved. What should we name this guy? I'm gonna pick one name for each type of fish that we catch today based on the best suggestions and most liked suggestions in the comments. So what are you waiting for? Start naming some fish. For this next part, we're heading out into the open seas, so it's not a bad idea to craft a boat. And in the most recent version of Minecraft, they have removed the need for a shovel from the Bedrock Edition crafting recipe, which is absolutely amazing. This is an ocean, and not all oceans are the same. This is just a standard ocean, so here we're gonna find salmon like we saw in the river, but in addition to that, we're also going to see cod. It's easy to tell the difference between the two because cod are brown while salmon are red. They're also a little bit longer too. If you're trying to choose between the two food sources, salmon is the better of the two. It gives you more hunger and the saturation is just a little bit better as well. But same thing, you can take a swipe at it with the sword and you have a chance to get a raw cod and a bone. Now, which one of you wants to come home with me? How about you, buddy? In an ocean, you will also find dolphins. Dolphins are amazing because they swim nearby you and actually give you a boost of of speed, just make sure not to accidentally hit them because they get very angry if you do. 
One way that you can tell the difference between ocean biomes is by looking at the ocean floor. The regular ocean that we've seen so far has a gravel floor and warm and lukewarm oceans have a sand floor. In lukewarm oceans, you will not see salmon here, but you will see cod like we've already experienced and a variety of tropical fish. I'm pretty sure there's hundreds of these things. Tropical fish are very cool to look at and collect if you want to build like an aquarium or something, but they are not a great food source. Oh yes, you're coming home. Come here. Oh, I gotta go up for air. I gotta go up for air. Don't go anywhere. I need it. I need the blue fish. I got him. Now it appears like an orange fish in the bucket, but look at the name. It's a blue dory. Once we release it back into the water, it will be that tropical fish that we just caught. I don't know. I might have to steal the name for this one. Dory? What a perfect name for a fish. It's like somebody maybe thought of that before. Okay, so these guys just spawned right in front of my eyes. I didn't think that salmon were supposed to spawn in lukewarm oceans. Somebody help me out. Why did that happen? Look, there it is again more salmon. They're all over the place. I mentioned that you shouldn't eat tropical fish because it's not worth it. But just for demonstration purposes, when you hunt a tropical fish, you will get the same drop every time. It's this orange clownfish looking guy. I don't know why they didn't add like a hundred different varieties of drops. That seems like a lot of work. Yeah, that, that's probably why they didn't do it. Tropical fish cannot be cooked and so you can only eat them in their raw form and when you do, you get one hunger back. 100% not worth eating tropical fish. They make better pets for aquariums, so probably just stick to that use. Why are there so many lighting bugs right now? Ooh, I wonder if it's the RTX feature that I have enabled right now. By the way, that's why the water is so clear. Unless you have RTX enabled, it's not gonna look like this. Hold on. Oh, and just like that, magically solved. <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait for the new Render Dragon features. Hopefully they're more supported than RTX was. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about fishing. You know, sometimes Minecraft does some really silly stuff. Aren't you supposed to be over there in the water? Anything good in here? Ooh, a treasure map. I'm gonna take it, but we'll save it for now. I have just found a warm ocean and the difference between a warm ocean and a lukewarm ocean is all of that pretty blue, yellow, purple, all that stuff. That is a coral reef. Unless Minecraft is being weird like it was earlier, you shouldn't see any salmon or cod here. But one more type of fish that you will find is this little guy right here. That's the puffer fish. If you get too close to him, he will puff up and potentially hit you with some poison. So let's, let's just for science, let's do it. Oh no, I'm drowning. Hold on. I just want to make a puffer fish mad. Is that too much to ask? Come here. Come here. There we go. <laughs> Oh, finally. Never have I been so happy to be poisoned in my entire time playing Minecraft. All right, come here, buddy. You're coming home with me. Got him. Similarly to tropical fish, you can eat puffer fish, but it is ill-advised because, well, it'll make you ill. You can't cook puffer fish just like tropical fish, and it's just gonna make you sick. So don't eat puffer fish. Just stick to the good stuff. Salmon or cod, that's where it's at. There's a couple more ocean biomes that you can find in the world that we're not going to explore today. And those would be the cold ocean and the frozen ocean. And unless you just happen to be near one and want to go ice fishing, just go find a regular ocean. If you're not the adventuring type, just skip the trip and stay home. There's another way we can fish, and that's by taking three sticks and two string and crafting a fishing rod. With a fishing rod, you can fish in a river, in the ocean, farther out in the ocean, in a puddle, in a smaller puddle. You know, this actually isn't supposed to work this way. Mojang made the changes on Java Edition, but they never made the changes on Bedrock Edition, so we can still fish in the most unusual places. And n you guys better not tell anybody on the developer team at Mojang about this. I don't want my AFK fishing farm that I'm gonna make in a few minutes to be nerfed in a couple of weeks. So, mum's the word. Regardless of where you like to do your fishing, it all works the same way. You cast the line and then you wait. With a standard fishing rod, you will be waiting five to 30 seconds to see a trail of bubbles appear, which means you're about to catch a fish or something else. Every once in a while, you'll catch a fishing rod that has enchantments on it. Most enchantments that you get on a fishing rod are actually really helpful, except for this one has Curse of Vanishing. Basically what that means, if we die while holding 
holding this fishing rod in our inventory, it's gone. Enchanted fishing rods pulled from the water most of the time are pretty badly damaged, and even with the curse of vanishing, this is a step up from the standard fishing rod, so I'm going to use some experience points to combine these two fishing rods together to make a brand new fishing rod with all of these enchantments. The luck of the sea enchantment will allow us to have a higher chance of catching treasure. Treasure can include things like enchanted books, saddles, which can be used for riding various animals, and more. In addition to fish and treasure, you can also catch junk, including lily pads, water bottles, rotten flesh, and a bunch of other junk. It's also important to note that rain will increase the rate at which you catch items. So in most cases where you just wanna get rid of that rain, it's actually really helpful here. So after about an hour of fishing, I've come away with a decent amount of fish, honestly not too much junk, and I'm kinda happy about that, and a pretty decent amount of treasure. I did acquire three new fishing rods, and this is the one I think I'm gonna use going forward because it has the same two positive enchantments without the curse of vanishing. It also includes mending, which will automatically repair this fishing rod every single time we gain experience points. So basically, Basically, it's indestructible. And while fishing on the dock is nice, is there a way that we can automate this and make it even better? Well, I'm so glad you asked because yes, there is, and that's what we're doing next. To automate the fishing experience, I'm going to build an AFK fishing farm. And it's also worth noting that this does require an auto clicker. So if you're playing on PC, that's not a problem. Some mobile phones, I think, can do this. I'm not sure about consoles. So this tutorial is not necessarily going to apply to everyone one, but it's still interesting to know about. To start off building this farm, I'm going to put down a double chest. Into the side of this double chest, I'm going to put one hopper, and then I'm going to stack another double chest directly on top of this hopper. Then I'm going to put a hopper right here, and on top of this hopper will go the iron bar, and on top of our iron bar is the pressure plate. Below this pressure plate and behind this iron bar, I'm going to put an iron trap door. You can see that it's slightly below. This is very important for how this farm works. On on top of this trapdoor, I'm going to place a new decorated pot from the Trails and Tales update. I absolutely love being able to find unintended ways to use new features, and this is one of them. But hold that thought for a moment. Behind this trapdoor, I'm going to place one slab right here, and then I'm going to surround the decorated pot and this slab with a U shape of slabs, and then I'm going to bring this down right here, down right here, and down right here, and then I'm going to place a water source right on this decorated pot. It will waterlog it. It. I'm going to scoop up another cod and take it back to the fish farm. And this is your last reminder. Make sure to be naming those fish. I want to see your ideas. This little guy is going to live right here in this open slot. He'll just swim around and happily live in a one by one. I'm so sorry. This is your life now. Basically, the reason that this guy is in here is it will increase the rates of this farm. Then from here, I'm going to take a couple of temporary blocks and I'm going to place a slab right here and a slab right here. And then I'll break this back out. And then I'm going to take another temporary block and another temporary block. And I'm going to place a trap door right there. Make sure that this trap door is even with the top of this block and above your head. And with that, this AFK fishing farm is completely done and ready for use. These two blocks right here are actually just to kind of keep us in place if we move all the way forward and hit this pressure plate the trap door will actually push us back into a reasonable spot so we don't really have to worry about it when you cast the line the water that is waterlogging this clay pot will hold the bobber and drop it onto that pressure plate pushing this trap door down in front of us and as you can see, when it gets pulled down, that pressure plate releases and that trap door goes back up. The reason this trap door is here to block our view is that when the auto clicker is going, you can see that I can't actually cast or retract the line as long as this trap door is in front of me. So if I toss out the line again and I just repeatedly click, I will not be able to retract the line until we are certain that we have caught something and it's gone down into the chest. So I have now loaded up my auto clicker and I'm getting myself set and then I'm going to turn the auto clicker on. And as you can see, it is just repeatedly going, 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 going until we catch something. 
and then it will cast the line again over and over and over. And I can just walk away from my computer at this point. But that might not be the best idea. Why might that not be the best idea, you ask? Well, that sun is gonna go down at some point and I'm completely out in the open. So I need to build a little something around this fish farm to make sure that we don't get attacked at night. Oh, and would you look at that? Just a little something I threw together. I designed this to look a little bit like a boat and fishing storage house. So it's got wood paneling on the side and a metal roof. Even though that's made out of stone and andesite, it still looks kind of metallic if you don't look at it too carefully. But I'm really happy with this. We got a few boats on the side that we can drag down to the water if we're ready to go fishing in the ocean. We've got some lighting around here to keep things nice and safe. And we got some gravel for the ground because a lot of times you see storage sheds, they're sitting on gravel. So I thought that would be a nice little effect. One important thing to note for the functionality of this farm, you do have to leave the water open to sky access. So I just kind of poked some holes in the roof to make it look a little bit run down, but we still have that sky access and the complete protection from any potential mobs, such as zombies, creepers, and especially the phantoms flying down and hitting us. Now, this is not your normal door. This is a trap door on the top and the bottom. With the new short sneak option, we can sneak through these trap doors and then shut them behind us and don't have to worry about zombies breaking the door down. So this is 100% mob proof and safe for AFK activity. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna stand here with my auto clicker and we're gonna go fishing. And after nearly two hours of fishing, here's what I've come away with. Nearly a double chest full of loot, including fish, enchanted books, new fishing rods, enchanted bows that we can put in furnace fuel because who wants mending on their bow? Not me. Oh my goodness, we got so much stuff. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I've actually recorded this clip three times now because OBS corrupted my video files twice. Hopefully this one works. But I combined my enchanted fishing rod with a new enchanted fishing rod and I now have some new enchantments. On this fishing rod, I've got Unbreaking 3 and Luck of the Sea, which we had before, but it is now at level three, the maximum enchantment that you can get, which will give us the highest possibility of treasure loot when we go AFK fishing. We've got mending on there and a brand new enchantment, Lure 2. There is a Lure 3, we just don't have it yet, but basically what that does, it reduces the maximum wait time before you catch a fish or an item. For every level that you have, it will reduce it by five seconds, so our maximum wait time is only 20 seconds now which is pretty great. But unfortunately, the vacation is over. I don't have time to go fishing anymore today because we got to move on to the next episode. If you did enjoy this one, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And don't go anywhere because there's more Bedrock Guide content on the way.